Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Zeros TV. I'm joined today by Brent Kachuba, the founder of Spot Gamma. Today, we're going to be talking about the return of meme stocks and specifically what the hell is going on with AMC. Brent, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and to talk, talk meme stocks. They're back. Exactly. They're back. And with a vengeance. I mean, if you look at the chart of AMC compared to what seemed like a peak that we might never see again, or at least uh, in, the, in the near future, we have just completely eclipsed that. It looks just like a bump on the chart. How did yeah. we get here? And I think really we should start back at what happened at the end of that first meme stock run, because it really sets us up for where we are now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I think in the time we're talking, the stock's up another ten percent AMC. So uh, it's it's all. <laughs> anyway, uh, it was it's an interesting thing, right? Because the it seemed like after the first squeeze that so many people felt they had been wronged by Wall Street, you know, and and Robinhood kind of blew up, and we said we're all going to go to Dogecoin, and that'll be the the saving grace. But here we are, you know, just a few months later, and and we're back to the same fundamental squeeze. Uh, the same mechanics that are squeezing, that's the short cover and the options induced, we call the gamma squeeze, uh, that took place in January, but it's happening faster now. And I think that's because retail is better organized. Okay. And you talked about it being a squeeze. I think last time the narrative was it's a short squeeze and you and the options guys were like, well, there's this gamma dynamic that's really driving it. When you look at this, I mean, the short interest has come down in a lot of these names, but the moves are just as crazy as before. And I think it really highlights the importance of the options market. Can you talk to me about, you know, what is driving that in the mechanics of how these gamma squeezes play out? Definitely. So uh, there's definitely a short squeeze component here, but typically what happens with short squeezes is once they're once the shorts are covered, right, the name stops and the thing and the, and the stocks typically flop. So the difference is when you have an options based squeeze, every time the stock goes higher, market makers need to buy more and more stock, and as more calls come into the market, more more call, more traders buy calls. Dealers got to hedge those too, right? So that can keep the squeeze going and it can really accelerate things. So where the short squeeze will stop out fairly quickly, the gamma squeeze will keep going, right? It's, it's, it's continued fuel. And we know that the options component is so big, particularly in AMC, AMC options volume, uh, I believe today is well over a million contracts. Last week, the average volume was over a million contracts. It's the second most active uh, options volume name. Uh, out of all 3,500 different listed stocks. All right, you talked about the volume last week. I mean, obviously, when you start to see moves like this, and there was some action last week, you know, how quickly does the options volume start to tick up? And for guys like yourself that are monitoring this, what is the level that you start to say, hey, something is building here, and we could get another event? And then what is the sort of event horizon past which like that really starts to kick in? How can we identify when we think a stock is set up to gamma squeeze? And what that is really based on is our estimated hedging pressure from the new options trading positions versus the volume in the underlying stock, right? You wanna see the market maker hedging, the estimated hedging has to be uh, an impactful amount of the underlying volume, right? And that's really what's gonna drive this thing. If we only have, you know, obviously two or three call options trading in a name, that's not gonna create enough hedging flow to push a stock higher. But when we see one, two, three million calls trade every single day, in a name like AMC, then you know that there's enough hedging volume in there that's likely going to drive the stock higher. And the other thing is, where is that volume taking place? So much of the options volume takes place in the closest expiration. So it's the next Friday's expiration. Um, and that those options, the nearest dated options have the highest gamma. So they are the most sensitive to the movement in the stock and require the most amount of hedges. Okay. And can you help me quantify this? So, you know, you, you talked about a million options. What is the amount of shares that a market maker, I mean, what, what I don't, I don't know what the Delta is on the, on the calls that are being bought, but let, let's say that it's a 10 Delta call and, and there's a, and there's a million of them that are trading in a day. What's the amount of hedging that a market maker might have to have to make? Sure. So a lot of that depends on the, obviously, like you said, the Delta of the call, right? If people are buying out of the money calls, those require less shares to hedge than say an at the money or um, you know, a lower strike call or a call that's closer to where the stock is trading. So if you figure you know, the average stock is, is trading uh, a million shares in AMC or a million contracts in AMC and you have an average of you know, just 10 deltas, you can do that math out and figure out that we're probably trading oftentimes 10% you know, of the stock's volume. And then obviously on days like this, 
you know, you have an accelerated amount of volume trading both in the stock, but you have extra options volume trading, which gives you that extra impact. So there's the delta impact of new options trades. You know, in other words, if I go out and buy a call now, right, that's generating deltas that a market maker has to hedge. Then there's also the gamma trade, which is all of the options positions that market makers already have on their books. They need to continuously hedge that, right? So there's really two parts of this. It's the existing position has to get hedged and any new trades that come on the book have to get you know, the, uh, have to also be hedged. Okay, so they, they sold a bunch of out-of-the-money calls that they thought were, you know, 10 delta, and it turns out they're 50 delta now. And that's Correct. that's where you get into big trouble. That's exactly right. So, you know, they have all these positions they have to hedge. Uh-oh, you know, new positions come on, and then they've got to continuously update their bids and offers on the screens, right? Because if their inventory gets too full, if they have too many short call positions on, they need to start raising the price of call options to deter buying, right? Because they want to offset their, their exposure. So they can do that by ratcheting up the price of calls. The issue is here, the stocks keep going up, which you know hurts them, right? They're now on the other side of convexity, so to speak, as the price goes straight vertical, their risk is going vertical. So they want to sell, they want to actually be buyers of calls now. So they're going to increase the price of calls so that hopefully more traders want to come out and sell off their call positions and lower their risk, lower the market maker's risk. So when you get these moves, you know, here at Zeros, we're focused mostly on short selling, but when you have an event mm -hmm. like this, it's relevant to every participant in the market. People are licking their lips, looking at this stock that's supposedly overvalued. And for lots of reasons, though, that is is maybe a, a, a sucker trade to try and jump in and short a stock like this. One, because it gets harder to borrow in these environments. But also, if you're shorting it using puts, you might be paying for that extreme rise in volatility that, that just can't be realized to the downside. So I want to talk about it from that perspective of people who are maybe licking their lips, looking at this thing, saying, oh, man, it's got to come down. Why is it so hard to short a stock that gets squeezed like this? Sure. So the, the issue is with the gamma squeeze is that the uh, the volatility is so high right now that if you were to try to buy a put, even if you're right, the puts are so expensive that the stock has to come down 50 or 100 percent for you to actually generate any income off of that. And in this current case here with AMC in particular, the stock is actually crashing higher. So with that volatility or implied volatility is going up, which means that the price of options is going higher. So you could actually buy a put here and maybe make money with the fact that the stock went up another 20% because implied volatility goes up you know, exponentially or in on, on an order of magnitude with that. So that makes the timing very tricky because if you go and buy a put now and the stock comes down, implied volatility likely comes down and you lose money on that put position because of the mechanics of how expensive options are due to the high implied volatility. So trying to short the stock here is very scary obviously as most of your readers are going to know because there's essentially no no upside you know price here that the the upside is unlimited here which is the other reason why selling calls is very dangerous a lot of traders like to do that right but you don't want to be on the wrong side of convexity in this in this point so what's actually the interesting trade we think is to sell puts and that's because when you sell puts even if the stock goes down when it goes down implied volatility should go down with it and that's what's so interesting is what you actually want to do here is short volatility, not necessarily short the stock. Because yes, the stock could likely come back down to 20 or $30. You know, we don't make estimates on valuation here, but we can say that the implied volatility now is just where it was back in January. In other words, it's really expensive. Can you help me put some math behind the amount of volatility we need to see realized to the downside for a put to be bought at this, at this level and make money? Um, yeah. I don't know if you have the, the chain in front of you. Right. So the, the at the money put for June 18th, which is the large monthly expiration, that's currently trading for $30, right? And the implied volatility on that uh, option is 555 So what that's telling you is that the cost of that put option is extremely, extremely expensive. So we're going to compare, let's just compare what an at the money option costs for, let's say, Apple uh, it's probably gonna be around 30. So, so an at the money put for the same expiration in Apple is trading with a vol, an implied vol of 20. So AMC is 555, the at the money implied vol on a put, and Apple's only 30. So if you look at the cost of options and consider implied volatility as the cost of the option, right, then AMC is extraordinarily expensive. And if the stock does start to come down, implied volatility will come down. So your put could lose value 
very quickly based on the fact that implied volatility just starts to drop. It's a, it's a bit of a strange phenomenon. So Brent, one of the questions I think that's on everybody's mind is how do you know when the madness is going to stop? How do you know when the, the memification of a name um, is finally losing its momentum and that they, there's likelihood that it's actually going to start rolling over? Yeah, I think in this case, you need a catalyst. Right? And, and one of the catalysts we think often can be is a large options expiration. So what we often see on these stocks where traders rush in on Monday to buy the Friday expiration, so the option that expires in five days, on Friday night, or excuse me, on Friday morning, the stock will get weaker, right? And it starts to sell off. And we think that's because everyone who bought calls on, say, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, those calls start to lose a lot of value. So if you bought an 100 strike call, say, for AMC today, the decay of that option is extremely high, assuming that AMC doesn't rally another you know, uh, 50% here, right? And so with that, as those calls decay, market makers can start to sell off stock, and that can start to have things unwind, right? Now, what typically has been happening in these meme stock rallies is that then, let's say on Friday, the stock sells off as it did last Friday. On Monday, you know, traders rush back in to buy the next weekly expirations. So these options expirations can be a catalyst for selling. And the question is, obviously, do the traders sort of reload the next Monday? The other issue is that anytime you have stocks move this much, there is stress put on the system. We saw that happen in January, wherein there was credit issues at Robinhood and there was all sorts of collateral related issues and they needed to raise a lot of capital in accordance. You know, today around noon, we saw AMC, BlackBerry, you know, GME, they all went vertical. They went convex at the exact same time, which is around 1215. Now, retail can't act in unison like that, right? That takes a lot of volume to spark that kind of a rally. That's something, and I don't know this for a fact, I'm speculating here, but that's something that usually happens around a margin call, right? Or some type of algo, you know, gone wild or something like that, uh, where you get this sort of exogenous spark that really makes these things uh, rally, right? And, and jump like that. So I think in this case, there's going to be some type of event or, uh, you know, something we can point to that say, look, this is when the system got stressed out or broke or the, regulate, uh, the regulators add extra volatility levels. Margins are certainly going to get pushed up. And at the end of the day, all that is doing is zapping demand, right? Uh, the demand is going to get pulled out of this. And as AMC goes higher, call options get more expensive. The stock gets more expensive. Less people can participate. And so what they're likely to do then is to shift their attention down to a cheaper stock, right? GameStop is $250 a share. The options are very expensive to trade. You know, an at the money option in GameStop's 16 bucks, right? That expires in two days. That's $1,600. In AMC, that option's only two bucks, so that's $200. So more people can play, right? So we likely then rally to, or, or we will likely then see focus shift to say BlackBerry, ticker BB, which is only trading at 10 bucks, right? And then we can make that thing rally instead. Okay. And so I want to understand this expiration uh, aspect there, because if everybody's in the money, they have that dry power to go in back on Monday. But it's when you see expiration come with a lot of open interest out of the money, so people are actually losing money there, and they don't have that same dry powder they would. You know, if I'm if I'm up twenty one thousand percent on Friday, I don't mind stepping back into the market on Monday. But right. if I if I bought the hundred and it closes on Friday at, at eighty five, I might not be going back in. Have you noticed that that matters as much as expiration does? Yeah, so that's a it's a great point. So there is also the issue of in the money options that go to expire because you need to have the collateral to buy shares of stock, 100 shares of stock, obviously, you know, when expiration comes up. And I don't think a lot of the retail traders that have bought call options in AMC have that collateral, right? If you bought at when the stock was at 20, if you bought a one call option, you know, you now need to come up with, you know, six, six, seven thousand dollars to buy that stock. I don't know the percentage of retail that, you know, maybe could afford that. And they're likely going to want to sell out of their call position. Right. And when they sell their call, market makers can then sell out hedges that they have. So if you picture that on mass, that can be a, a flow to really weaken things. The other thing is that because implied volatility is so high, if the stock just pauses going up, right, if it just if the acceleration up pauses, then implied volatility comes down. And when implied volatility comes down, the value of calls erodes, which also allows market makers to sell. So basically, we use this analogy all the time where it's like a shark and they say sharks need to keep swimming, right? They call this ram ventilation, where if the stock stop, if, the, if a shark stops swimming, it sinks to the bottom of the ocean. And it's kind of a similar thing. If AMC stops going up, that vol comes down. And, that, and when, as soon as that implied volatility drops, 
market makers can sell can uh, sell shares, sell off their hedges, and the stock could really, you know, dip down. So with all these indicators that we can be watching to figure out what's going to happen next, what actually is the positioning at this moment in time? Now, this is a this is a fast moving stock. Full disclosure to everybody that five minutes from now, after we stop recording, it could be completely different. But where are we right now? In AMC, we came into the day, and I'm looking up the live number here. Uh, with the 40 strike was the largest center of call open interest. So as the market goes through that level, it picks up gamma, right? It picks up hedging flow that market makers need to hedge. So that can be an acceleration event, but it also can be a pin level into these expirations so that the stock may come back down and mean revert to that big 40 level because there's so much open interest there, right? That is where the center of hedging is in GameStop. Now, if I look at the real-time flow today, we see roughly 60,000 calls traded at the 50 strike and uh, sorry i want to look at this friday so if we look at the uh, flow from today there was a hundred thousand calls that traded at the 50 strike this is for friday's expiration and another hundred thousand calls that traded at the 60 strike so the open interest respective open interest on those two strikes is ten thousand and six thousand so in other words we have volume of over a hundred thousand but open interest of only five thousand so it's likely that the open interest and the people that hold those positions just shot up, right? So the center of hedging gravity is probably going to shift up to around 50 into Friday. So we would look for the stock to sort of mean revert into that you know, 50 level uh, based on the, the current data. A lot of people have been citing this as a sort of new phenomena or something that is unique to these meme stocks. But I know that this happens in indices. It happens in names that are are not that do not have high short interest. You know, how common is this gamma squeeze event? And how many traders out there? I mean, we have the retail traders, but how many professional traders out there are focused on these types of things all around the market, not just in these meme stocks? Yeah, that, that's a it's a great question. So there are volatility hedge funds, right? That this is the name of their game. They can identify when volatility is taking off, and they know they know how to dynamically trade options and stock positions as well to play this type of flow in AMC. So historically, we would see these types of options-driven events on the way down. They would be called a gamma trap. And if you think about the mechanics of this, when the market starts to sell off and people get scared, they buy puts, right, to hedge themselves. And that drives up implied volatility, i.e. the VIX spikes, and that causes market makers to need to short shares of stock or short futures to hedge themselves. That reinforces selling, which gets people scared. They buy more puts and the cycle completes. The, the cycle continues, rather. So just to give you, I know that a lot of people here are focused on shorts. So do you know what the low was in the March 2020 uh, stock market crash? Uh, I believe it was March 23rd, and I like to refer to it as the Bill Ackman bottom because I think it happened right when Bill was on TV talking about how uh, <laughs> the market yeah. was going to go lower, and, and I believe he was closing his puts out at that moment in time. Yeah, so that, that's, a, that's a pretty good guess there. The low was the day after the March major March monthly options expiration. So that's a quarterly expiration which had huge put positions on you can look up, there's articles in the Wall Street Journal about how Bridgewater had on massive put positions for March. Yeah, yeah. The day after that expiration is when the bottom in the market came in. So if you think about all these in-the-money puts, right, they all expired, massive amounts of in-the-money puts, and then suddenly there's a giant short cover rally. So Bill Ackman's puts probably expired that day, and there he is outside saying, okay, my puts have expired now, they're in the money, let's start this rally back up. So for those of your, the people watching this that like to figure out, hey, when is a good time to close out my short position, I would look for these large options expirations because when big, uh, op, when big put interest expires, that can be a spot where dealers sh sh cover their shorts, right, their hedges, and that can lead to a bounce. So Brent, I actually had another question they wanted to ask you related to options markets and short selling. You know, it seems to me that a lot of shorts got burned being outright short, some of these names back in the original squeeze, and it made them reconsider the risk of having, um, having an outright short position because there is that unlimited loss aspect to it. Well, part of the reason that people haven't traded puts, uh, one, because they expire and there's a, a volatility aspect to it, but two, because a lot of the names that short sellers want to short, which are these smaller names, there hasn't been a liquid enough options market for them to be able to use puts in the way that they might be able to now. Have you seen with this explosion of options volume, you know, 
markets that traditionally wouldn't have made sense for short sellers to be buying puts now available for them and, and really a new tool for short sellers to be able to use. Yeah, that's a, it's a great observation. And you can absolutely see the change in dynamic for, with options volume over the past, you know, six to eight months, really, really starting back in August of last year in that these small cap names, which typically had terrible liquidity profiles in the options market and, and arguably not great liquidity on the stock side as well. Um, now they are very liquid, right? There's a ton of volume taking place. We obviously see that with AMC and, and Bill, uh, BlackBerry and GameStop, right? Where these are small cap stocks with very liquid options markets. Market makers have a ton of inventory, so they're very active and making you know fairly tight spreads for the most part, given the volatility. And so that defined risk of a put option is very attractive in these instances, particularly if you're a short seller and you don't know whether the market's really going to come at you, right? They, they might sort of focus on your short position in particular and try to squeeze you out of that. So if all you have on is put positions, your risk is capped and that can be a much more comfortable position to be in, uh, you know, to, to, to trade in. And then there's also this interesting way of being able to be a short seller and shorting volatility, right? Instead of necessarily wanting to necessarily being short the stock outright. Um, so the options market really opens up a bunch of angles that a traditional short selling fund may find really interesting. Okay. And what about you know, a lot of that volume, people cite the retail army and, and what they're interested in is, is buying these out of the money calls and trying to moon stocks. Does that call volume translate into liquidity on the put side? It can for sure. It definitely alleviates, it either adds to or alleviates pressure on the market makers. I think that there are a lot of people in these meme stocks, they see the high implied volatility that they, they say, you know, AMC can't go up 100% today. I mean, it happened to do it, right? But those calls are very expensive and they can be very attractive to sell, right? You could overwrite your AMC position, you know, against that. And so that can alleviate the pressure, the hedging pressure when people are either, you know, going on the other side of a call, right? Not everyone here is buying calls. There are some people trying to sell way out of the money options, obviously, and that can change the hedging flow and the hedging dynamic. And so that can also allow market makers to adjust their price. Makes It makes puts cheaper if they can offset that some of their delta risk, right? Their directional risk uh, using call options. Well, Brent, thank you so much for coming on Zeros TV. Looking forward to doing it again soon. Absolutely. Thanks again, Matt.